when I watched this movie this time, I was like, I'm, I'm kind of watching almost like a first time viewer a little bit, right? Mm. Like I'm trying to focus on all the little plot details. Which is what we're trying to do get... here. Yeah, That's exactly. Good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. And I actually like doing this. This is a really great, great exercise. But the You've thing is, I'm watching. You've got a first time viewer right here. Yeah. If you want to ask me some questions. <laughs> so, so Nance. Wait, who is that? Wait. Who? Well, <laughs> Nance, well, real quick, real quick. Have you been there the real whole quick. time? <laughs> real quick, Most though, I just want to say yeah. this. When I was watching this movie this first this time around, I was like, you know, like the la when we talked about Honor Magic Secret Service, that was you know my movie that I, I really pushed for. Uh, and, and you had this whole bit where you're like, no, the intro should have been this, right? And like you were having your own version of the intro. And for me, yeah. I was like, the intro to this movie could have been even more interesting. And I think in one way... How it could, could have been, it have been any more interesting? Let me, let me, let me talk. Let me, let me speak. <laughs> Go ahead. How could let it have talk? been any more interesting? I think it could have been more interesting in the fact that either A, you had... Scaramanga killing these agents, which I, I could see why they may not done that because they're like, well, we kind of did that in the last movie. We don't want to repeat ourselves there. It could also have been something where we don't even see Scaramanga's face in the beginning of the film for a good chunk of the movie. And it would have been even more interesting if Scaramanga, like we thought, was a false ally again, where he could have been approached Bond. Bond has no idea who this guy is. And I, I mean, I'm just, you know, again, it's like what you did. You had I don't your own see version any of, that. of this I really movie. don't see any of that. Like, I think the way they did it was that prologue is by far not only the most interesting prologue, but I mean, it's like we literally just start the movie on this fantasy island. We're like, whoa, where are we? Who is this guy? And then you have a most dangerous game style duel to the death yeah. where his servant is paying the guy to do this. Oh, that would have been too easy. It's loved. You'll have to look elsewhere, monsieur. You're saying that it should have it should have opened with with like Bond walking into the office and they're like this faceless guy's after no, you. Like, no, no. The movie no, no, establishes no, no. I'm saying, I'm, how I said his cool Scaramanga is. Well, here, right away. I'm saying I'm saying they could have done the opening of the same opening of the movie, like that you love, and not shown his face. And use that as a way to get us intrigued to who is the man with the golden gun and creating a bit more mystery. And as the film goes on, we don't, we're not 100% sure who the man with the golden gun is. And then it's revealed towards the end. Because I, I, one of the things I love about this movie, one of the scenes that I, I'm like, I do love this scene. Because Bond's like, has never, he even mentions it in the movie. He's like, no one's ever seen this guy's face. Or at least, yeah. he's like, that was part of his plan, right? He's like, he tells uh, Everyone tells knows Q. he has three nipples. He's no like, knows tells Q, he everyone yeah. knows what this guy has three nipples. That's all you see in the beginning. Knows... You don't see his face. You just see nipples yeah. coming it's out like, of the nobody water. Nobody knows that, but they do know that he has three <laughs> nipples. And yeah. like, I'm like, oh, you could have done so much more with that. You could have been like, that could have been a big reveal to Bond where like we find out like, oh, like this guy that we maybe Bond had been hanging out with or he thought was an ally in this, this whole thing was actually... Uh, Scaramanga all along. As the movie stands, that all pays yeah. off when he sits down next to Bond, and Bond is like, "Hey, random guy, like I'm, I'm just th this isn't a dead body." And he's like, "Forget it, Mister Bond." Like he reveals himself to be Scaramanga in that moment, and then Bond's first instinct is pu to pull his gun. He's like, "No, no, no, my midget's behind you. Don't even bother." And then that uh, that allows him to to introduce himself. But it's not that I don't yeah. like Scar. I don't like. I like Christopher Lee. I like the yeah. I like what he does and the things that they do like connect as far as Bond versus him, I think do work. Like I do like I love his backstories. Like he was in the circus. When I was a boy, I was brought up in a circus. My only real friend was a magnificent African bull elephant. You see, Mr. Bond, I always thought I liked animals. And I discovered that I liked killing people even more. You know, and I loved his like you said, like the motivation behind him. He's all money. He, there's no there's no confusing this, right? But I do feel like the whole energy thing and all of that stuff, it just like it gets in the way of what could have Why been. Why does it bug you though? Like what is the problem with having this backdrop it's so of an energy? It's like, so silly. I, I, I can't help it's but think that you- It's obnoxiously silly for- Because you're like, it dates it. Well, it doesn't date it. it what does. is your problem with it? What is your problem with it? It's just, it, it's to me, it's again, it's a silly, th it's a silly premise where it's like, okay, we have this. Okay. And here's the other thing. The world like, we is have always going through an hold energy on, crisis. Hold on, hold on. It's, it's like, we have the like, solar agitator. Countries would be going to war agitator. over that technology. Let me finish. We have the solar agitator, right? In this movie. Yeah. But then like next couple movies, does that affect the other movies? Because would you in expect my mind, it I'm to? Like, would you expect it to? I kind of 
I mean, if it's a world changing thing, like you're saying, like, you know, uh, you know, Dude, it's the government. They, you, 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 could, you, could, you could say that the government covered it up so they can keep making oil money. The oil shakes will pay you just to keep solar energy off the market. It just seems very strange. And it's like the last movie to me. It's let's, like let's one stay of the things on that point, bothers though. me let, a No, no, bit. no. Let's stay on point. You're talking about future Bond movies. I don't know what the f*** that means. We're talking about this movie, and you're saying that because they developed some technology, we need to see it in all the movies hence. We're talking about this movie specific singular movie and for some Does reason get, you have some me, problem with the energy this, crisis plot let me let and me it's ask you this because i do get distracted by i get distracted by the end with the the blo like the the fight with him and Nick knack which i think is great i actually do like that part yeah I can't does even. he get the agitator or does it get destroyed in 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 the in the island he pulls it out and he and he 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 brings it home like he gets it in the he end. brings it home okay he throws yeah. it in his shirt okay. yeah I just think I, it's one of those things where it's like, I wish that wasn't necessarily the MacGuffin, and I wish that wasn't the part of the movie. why? Like, you haven't provided one reason why other than just personal bias. Like, you just don't like... Because, like, again, it's a loose backdrop for the for the main story. The main story is Scaramanga and Bond. Like, we, okay, so we're gonna... So he has a laser in this movie now? Like, it's like, okay, yeah, the solar-powered lasers in this movie that we use to explode this thing. This is the part I really like. feels like the screenwriters were like, okay, we have to have a giant set in the end of this movie because they always have giant sets in the end of this movie. Even though the story's like mono y mano story, we still have we still have to check the box offs. Uh, box well, it's like off. we need we need an exciting escape. And how do we manufacture an exciting escape? We need a cool layer yeah. and we need to blow it up. We need to blow it <laughs> yeah. up the layer. Yeah. And that it, it just bothers me in the end of the movie. It's like, well, if you really wanted it to be about Bond fighting this other guy and it's in this fun house, like wouldn't it even be better if, like, they were fighting in where the power plant is and then amongst the fight that they Not have, like, something happened? Not at all! They're fighting happened? in a f***ing fun house controlled by a midget! Like, and the fun, and again, that's and so again, much like, better the than you're fighting saying, amongst those, those big the circular things. Like, are you crazy? No! The, the way they have the fight is, is fun as f*** okay, as set so, up from the beginning. But then, but then, listen... At, at the end, the, you know, you have like, it's like two, three minutes for them to get the solar agitator. Um, and, th and again, that's just like, it's just like, a, uh, it's, it's like capping off the movie. All of that in, in my, like in, in my interpretation, what all the function of all of that story wise is not only to have like, oh, we got to have an explosive escape to run away. All, yeah. In that whole process, who do you forget about? What are you talking? Wait. You completely forget about Nick Knack during that whole escape. By the time that Nick Knack shows himself, you're like, oh, shit, Nick Knack. Without any of that, you would just be like, wait, like, oh, Nick Knack's going to come out.